Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus. Shalom. I trust that the Lord has been faithful to us and he has kept us alive up to now. I want to share with us today briefly about uh, holding on to faith amidst uh, the different storms of life. Every one of us faces a storm in life. And these storms come in all times. Whether you like or you don't like, there will be a storm. But in the midst of the storm, what do we have to do? And that's what I would like to share with us. And I pray that you are encouraged and you, you're lifted up from the storm that you are in and you pull up your faith in the God you trust and make your life reign greatly amid all that you go through. Let's pray. Loving Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, this morning is a wonderful day and the hour that you've given unto us. As I take on to share, Lord, your word about the King of Glory, us and our souls holding on to faith amidst the storms of our lives. I ask for the impartation of the Holy Spirit through this word. The Lord, whosoever will listen to this word, Lord, they will be encouraged. They will, King of Glory, be lifted up from the storms that they could be going through. I give you praise, I give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, let's look to the open the Bibles to the book of uh, Colossians, chapter 1. That's where I want to begin from. Chapter 1 and verses uh, 23. And now in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 23, Paul says, If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope, held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you, are, you had, and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now Paul is speaking to his friends, the Colossians, and uh, he's giving them an uh, impetus of knowledge, which is about holding on to faith. Because faith will cost you to be established. You know, faith is believing in things we have not seen. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, Paul gives us all the understanding and expressions of faith. How Abraham by faith obtained what he was not meant to obtain. I want to take this moment that if it was not Abraham standing my farm, in that way, he would have not been able to get that that he, he had to get on. Faith is the fuel to man. Faith is the fuel to a believer. But as fuel run, as a vehicle runs dry uh, when you're driving on the way because of fuel, at times even us as believers, we can run dry. When you look at our lives, there are different challenges that we go through. Right now as I speak, countrywide people are going through a bigger mountain or a storm of a disease called COVID-19. Some of us have been shaken. Some of us who have been thrown down by the storm winds of this COVID-19. And when you look at our souls, many times we even start to give up. Because as I speak, uh, many of us have lost, or some of us have lost our dear ones to this disease. Now what do we have to do amid this all the thing? The Bible is giving us an encouragement. And Paul is saying that uh, if we continue in our faith, we will be established. And I believe this establishment will carry us through all things of our lives. Let's look at the, uh, the story of Job. There's a man called Job, a man who was so faithful to God. A man who, in all his life, I mean, it's all that uh, he was doing. Though he was not so much knowledgeable, like the way we can be today when we say we are saved. But the guy was so cautious. 
The guy said that I will in all ways honor this God. And even the sons go down to, 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 to party, would come back and go and understand on their, behavior, on their behalf and repent. But Satan came in and you know, had to ask him, ask of him. And Job went through a terrible storm of sickness. Could your sickness be more stronger than that of, of, of Job? When you look at Job, the mantle is his life. Was the mantle that, uh, first of all, his skin had to be destroyed. Secondly, the pains in the skin could not make him sleep. Thirdly, that skin came up with the rashes that you cannot grab by with your fingers. You have to look for another, another thing to help you scrub them. Paul, uh, 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 Job looked for a broken part of a pot and he started scrubbing himself with it. How much of, uh, of the storms have you gone through? What are the levels of uh, the pain the storm has brought to your life? Have you gone to a state where even the skin or the part of your body you have taken so many medicines and you've become tired of it. You've gone to so many uh, uh, chemotherapies and all that and become tired of it. Could it be a storm of joblessness? After all these kind of things, there is no more job for you. Could it be a storm of loneliness? That after all these seasons and time, you no longer, you know, you have no friend. You are lonely. In this COVID that we, we are experiencing, COVID takes us into a state of loneliness. But I want to bring, I want to bring hope to us. As we look to uh, the Word of God in the book of, uh, uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 21, uh, we will get a, 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 a story of a young lady who was, who was sent away by a then uh, uh, husband because... Uh, when Sarah could not conceive, Sarah asked uh, her maid to, to Abraham to sleep with her maid so that they would have a child. But later on, when God came through and blessed Sarah, Sarah turned against the maid and ordered that the maid need to be sent out. Abraham had to do so, though in pain, but he had to send the maid out. Listen to what he says later on. When we talk about isolation, or quarantine in our lives. In, in, in Genesis chapter 21 and verses uh, 8, we read and say, the, the child grew and was weaned on the day Isaac was weaned. Abraham held a great feast, but Sarah saw that the son whom Haggai, the Egyptian, had born to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave, whom uh, a woman and her son, for that uh, that woman's son will never share the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because of the concern his son, because it concerns his son. But God said to him, "Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to what Sarah." tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offsprings will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and skin of water and, and gave them to Haggai. He set them on their shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. This is what I talk about isolation. The boy was put under one of the bushes. Then she said she went off and sat down about the bush away. For she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. Now Haggai looked at the matter and said, I cannot be able to watch you die, my son. I will isolate you. I will quarantine you in a particular place. 
as I go keep mourning. That's exactly what is happening to our families today. We look, we see our friends, our, our relatives, but when COVID is, uh, they are tested positive, they are taken and quarantined or isolated from us. We can no longer see them. We start losing hope. We start carrying ourselves to a moment in life where we, we look at things and say, there is no more hope for us. A person has been isolated. A person has been quarantined. Let me just be here waiting to hear when they keep quiet or when they call me and tell me that he or she is dead. Praise the Lord. But listen to what God did at that poor moment of the storm where Haggai was in the storm of no food. The water was over. The food that was meant to be given was also over. The Bible records it and says, verse 17, God heard the boy cry, and the angel of God called to Haggai from heaven and said to her, What is the matter? Haggai, do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as if he lies there. Le lift up the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and showed a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy to drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an anchor. God knows us and God can meet us at, at any place. Families, when we get into, when our fair friends, our family members are gotten into, are taken into isolation, it's our honor to pray. Let's cry to the Lord. When Haggai sobbed for the Lord, the Lord heard the cry of the boy. When people are in isolation because of COVID, they are crying. And God can meet them from there. So there is hope amid this storm that we go through. But there is work that we need to do. And that is raising our faith higher. Higher beyond all challenges. And look forward that this God can be able to stand in for us. In the book of Job, chapter 19, and verses 25, Job speaks of this one word that runs into my mind every time I read this uh, the story of Job. As I said earlier on, a man who was given unto by God to Satan, for t and Satan tortured him and made him not to see and have any kind of peace in his body. And the wife even comes in to say, cast this God and die. But this is what Job said. And this is what I want us to do so that we can lift our faith up together. Job says, I know that my Redeemer lives. And that, and that in the end, he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see the Lord. Your skin, your body, your whatsoever can be destroyed. But I want to, I want to encourage you. That one thing by faith is to stand amidst the storm you're going through. Amidst the pains you're having. Amidst the rejections you're going through. Amidst all the misunderstandings that they put you into. And say one thing. That your Redeemer lives. And because your Redeemer lives, even at the end of all things, you will stand. Because he will stand for with you in the, in the name of our Lord Jesus. And when you look at this, our God loves us. And God is speaking to you and me. That I mean it's all this storm. Let's develop, let's carry, let's build the faith our Father. Abraham had. Abraham was a man who in amidst all the challenges he still stood up. And, and in amidst all that he walked up with the Lord. Even when the Lord told him that go and sacrifice your only begotten son, Abraham would not say no. He went. And he never lied. One of the things in the storms of life don't lie. Speak the truth. Haggai spoke the truth. 
she was so bad for the boy because there were no there was no food. That was truth. She, she never lied in one or the other and say because I was just out of this home, let me lie so that uh, maybe I can have someone to sympathize with me. She moved in the truth. When Isaac asked Abraham, Daddy, we have everything, but where is the sacrifice? And then he told Isaac, the Lord will provide. Men of today will say, oh, we shall buy it from there just to make the boy happy. Yet you know that uh, you're not going to buy it. Because Abraham said so by faith, with faith. When they reached there and they tied up Isaac to sacrifice him, God provided the ram. God wants us to walk in faith and speak truth and only truth. Number two, God wants us to deal with the fear. Fear will not make us be able to experience the mighty and mightiness of God in our lives. Storms bring fear. But when you are an eagle, you fly among, uh, beyond the storm without fear. And when you kill fear, the hand of God will come mightily to you. And I want to encourage you, you can't be sick right now. Take away the fear of death. In the book of Isaiah 25, the word of God says, On this mountain, I will swallow up death forever. God makes a promise that death will not limit us. Death will not stand in against us. He says, uh, uh, when you look at Isaiah 25, the whole part of it going to chapter verse 7 onwards, say, on this mountain, I will destroy the shrewd that and fall all people. If it is through shrewd of pain, the shrewd of, of disease, that has, um, has, has come in to destroy you or unfolded itself in us, God is giving us a promise that he will destroy it. And he says, I will wipe tears out of their faces. He will remove his people, his people's disgrace from the earth. The Lord today will remove disgrace from us. The tears that we have cried, God, is we will remove it when we remain in faith. Child of God, a mere soul that you go through, uphold yourself in faith and make faith be the, be the food that you eat. Make faith be the fuel of your life. And with this that we take on, there are greater promises of God that he has for us. Let's hold to these promises. God is not man to lie. I want to speak to your life today that in the midst of that you're going through, you will see the hand of God. You will not die. God will come through for you. God will wipe that tear out of you. What only you need to do is to stand firm in your, in your faith in the Lord and you'll see the salvation of God. He saved a job at the last moment. Jesus saved Peter when he was drowning. He provided for Abraham because of faith. Yes, he saved Jacob amid the fears of the brother. Yes, he saved Joseph from being killed, destroyed, just because of holding up in faith in God. God worked wonders through the disciples. And made their lives reign greatly. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. If he was able to do that for them, he will do it for us too. Let's pray.